Hey humies, I'm IV and we're gonna do a video about gouache on acetate as a canvas and how I make paintings. Exciting. First of all, if you wanna use the same gouache for two days straight without it drying out and it's acrylic gouache, here's how you do that. Squish, squish. I take one of my son's lunch bags that he's done using. I also reused this plastic lid. So you know, get the most use out of your plastic before you throw it in the dump and ruin the planet. So this red is from today. It's obviously still wet, look, squish, squish. See, today is Sunday. This yellow is from Friday. Still wet, let me show you. All right. And what I do is I set the bag on there gently. You don't wanna, you know, smash it on there and the paint spreads all over the place, which I obviously kinda did right here. But um, sit on there gently. Then just go around the edges here. The edges will like dry against the plastic where the air can get to it but everything on the inside of the very little edge, be good. All right, so then this blue that was right here is from Saturday morning. <laughs> it's from Saturday morning. It's my little sound effects. It's still wet, because I can show you. My finger actually in it. Still wet. Okay, and then this one is from a week ago. Let's see. When I paint the base color on the acetate, I paint it on the back side of where I put the color pencil. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so the color pencil is on this side, but I paint the base on this side. Okay, let's see another example. The color pencil is on this side, but I would paint the base on this side. Color pencil, paint. Color pencil, paint. Let's talk about how much paint to put on the acetate when you start painting. Okay. So this guy, this guy I painted on the, so you can see that it's see-through in the sunlight, but it's not when it's against something. The larger forms of paint bases, what am I saying? The larger forms that have bases of paint or on the back. I did like details on the front. Let's talk about thickness of paint. So when applying your paint, let's say there are many forms to this flower, this sunflower, being that it has many petals. Well, let's say you're gonna do all the petals the same base color. So if you're gonna do all the petals the same base color, you don't really have to worry about staying in the lines for each petal. I mean, out here, yeah, but in here, no. Like next to each other. So how you can base the thickness so that you don't have to do multiple layers or coats of paint to get that solid base is get your paintbrush loaded up with paint, start applying the paint, and the lines of the individual petals, when they start to disappear and you can't see where the petal starts or where it ends, you know, next to each other, like the lines are covered up, then it's, it's probably thick enough. Because if you can't see through this to where the color pencil is on the front, you can't see the color pencil through the back side, then it's gonna be pretty thick as far as making it solid on the front side. Front side. <laughs> so what happens when you use water is it becomes more like watercolors and the texture on the acetate becomes cloudy and watercolory. 
and um, it's not gonna look solid. It's gonna be even more see-through than it already is. So if that's what you want, that's great. If you want it to look solid, like mine looks solid, just don't use any water because it's really easy to use too much water. On a second note, if you already have the first layer or base painted on, you can use water to make the paint slide across that layer more easily and it won't affect the solidness at all. As long as the first layer of paint that you already have on there is good and dry. If you don't like how the, like say the background color is like, you can see like the texture of the brush. If you don't, if you're not into that, you don't like that, just make sure you're going the same direction with your brush as you're painting. So like, if you're going, if you're gonna paint right to left, just keep going right to left with your paintbrush. And any of the little spots where you can't do that, because they're smaller areas, just get those spots and then at, when you're done getting the spots, just kind of lightly take your brush over it so that it looks like it's going that direction also. Um, I don't worry too much about that. I kind of try to sort of go the same direction with my brush, like a grip amount of paint at a time. You can just blotch it to kind of like not have strokes at all, if that makes sense. So let's cover base. So painting in the base on the back, you can paint it however you like, but the way I do it is I use a different color to show dimension, just like I use a different line weight to show dimension. Or dimension, perspective? Perspective. If you look here, there's two different colors to this flower. Pink, it's like a pink and then more of a red pink. Dark magenta, maroon, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, how did I decide which areas would have the two different colors is I decided all of the petals to the back of the flower facing the back would be lighter. And I decided all the petals that were facing the inside facing the Oh God, I forgot what this is called. <laughs> like the actual, what's actually called, you know, where the pollen is. Um, anyways. I went around to each petal and made it the color associated with what side the petal was facing. So most of these petals are facing the inside here of this pollen area that I can't remember the name of. And the parts of the petals that I knew was the side facing behind the flower towards the stem, I made the lighter color. See, lighter color. Lighter color, lighter color towards the stem. Another thing to consider when choosing your canvas, if you're doing acetate or let's say vellum or anything that's not just regular paper, even paper, um, you may or may not want to use a gesso. I'm not going to explain what gesso is, but it helps with painting and keeping your canvas from absorbing the paint and all that stuff. So just, you know, Google gesso. <laughs> I don't use gesso, but some people who paint on acetate use gesso. It's worth saying. <laughs> Let's talk about pencil on acetate. I use Prismacolor Premier color pencils, the ones that don't erase like at all on paper. But on acetate, they erase great, just fine, even with a regular eraser. I use Dark Umber. What am I saying? I'm not looking at the camera again. Okay. <laughs> uh, so using color pencil on acetate, you want to know what you're drawing so you're probably going to want to just do your drawing on a piece of paper and then transfer it over so like put the acetate on top of your sketch and trace it you can do whatever you want though whatever works for you i make the sketch on a piece of paper i put the acetate on top sometimes i put a little tape so it doesn't move around if that makes it easier depending on what i'm doing and then after i have it all on there i'll sketch it with the prismacolor color pencil and just, just go slow and try not to mess up because I found that when you erase the residue from the eraser or something, I'm guessing that's what it is, affects the texture of the acetate and then when you try to write with the pencil over your line again, it doesn't go on like 
concentrated, if that makes sense. When I want to erase something, it's usually paint that I'm erasing from the acetate, like the base on the back of the canvas. So let's say I go over the line because I'm horrible at coloring inside the lines. <laughs> um, and I want to like take that edge off so that it's not past the line in the form or shape that I want the back base color to be in. I, I will use a sandpaper eraser. The one I'm specifically using right now, which is the only one I've bought so far, is the Tombow Mono Sand Eraser. And, I mean, it does the job. I don't know if it's any better than any other one because I haven't tried any other one. Um, and on the eraser, it says it's for ink. I've never tried it with ink. I do know if you use a sandpaper eraser on paper, it kind of like messes up the paper. Um, however, acetate says it's for ink also. So if you wanted to do ink on acetate and use a sandpaper eraser, that would work. I would say it's best just to stay in the lines rather than think I'll try to do it clean and if I mess up I can just erase it. Trust me, it's a, it's work to erase the gouache off the back of the acetate. It comes off great. I recommend doing a circular motion so that you're going in different directions against the paint because it'll come off faster and easier. But it's work. I would definitely recommend just staying in the lines. Go slow and fo be focused and try to not mess up. <laughs> Best advice ever, don't mess up. <laughs> Something that I don't do that I should do, and I always say I'm going to do it and then I don't think about it when I'm actually like in the zone painting, is if you're right hand, start from the left and go right. If you're left hand, start from the right and go left. So that when you're painting or drawing and stuff, your hand isn't like, actually I'm not left handed, so I don't know if that, start from wherever if you're left handed. <laughs> I think you drag your hand no matter what if you're left handed. I don't know, I'm both handed, but I use my right hand for art. I use both hands for like sports and everything else, I don't know, I don't play sports. <laughs> I should be going from the left to the right or bottom up or whatever so that I'm not like putting my hand on top of things. So I can't tell you how many times I get paint right here where I smudge something and yeah. Anyways, it's horrible and I should do that but I'm just one of those people where it's hard for me to focus for a long time. So in order to stay working, like stay in that, that flow, I just move around to different parts so that I can't, my brain can't get like I don't know, like bored basically or something. I personally don't get bored, but I think my brain does because I will start to feel tired and I'll be like, Ugh, I'm tired, I wanna take a break. So what I do is I just take a break from that one area and I go to a different area. And I do it automatically, I don't even think about it. So that's why I do that. I shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Do it so your hand isn't going over the top of your thing, you'll have an easier time. All right, let's, let's talk about different kinds of acetate. So here's what I use. I use Graphics Duralar uh, Matte Finish Acetate. This, this particular one I use is specifically called Duralar, which is the like, it's not what it is, it's the brand name of that graphics product. Does that make sense? Graphics with, a, with an X. So here's the light colors. They're all painted on this side, like I was saying. And what I did was I painted more paint to this end and less paint to this end. And I did the same thing on this swatch piece. And this one, you can see that it covered all of the light spots and everything. And when you put it to the light, Wait, hold on. Let's turn you this way. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but when you put it to the light, you can see through it, and you can see where the light spots make a darker puddle area. Okay, and then this one is something new that I tried. It's called Yupo Paper by Legion. And 
It's made of 100% polypropylene, acid free, white. It says it's suitable for watercolor, alcohol inks, and acrylics, which would include gouache, but they didn't put that on there. This one's the translucent. A little sketch on there. I don't know if you can see the sketch, but it's in pencil. And that worked out okay, it seemed like. But um, let me show you the paint though, because that's the problem here. Check this out. I, I made a mess, there's a little bit on this side, but ignore that. Um, this is the non-painted side other than where I made a mess. This is the painted side. I did exactly the same as the other one, except for the little lights um, puddles of paint, the little light splotches, because this was actually just a scrap that already had that on there. So I just painted over it, but it doesn't matter for this example because you wouldn't be able to see those anyways, because look at this. You can't barely see through it. So if you're doing what I'm doing, this is not gonna work for that. See the difference? And I went more paint to less paint too. So right next to each other. Big difference, right? Am I right? Huge. So if you're gonna planning just to paint on the, the right side, and this would work just fine and it's it's great material um but if you're planning to do it the way i'm doing it where the base like this part this is on the this is this is on the back this is on the front so if you're planning to do it this way where you have some of the base on the back you're gonna want to use something like this yupo is not gonna work for you but yupo is a nice material it's uh recyclable and it's treeless. I mean, and this is treeless too and recyclable, but Yupo's great. It's just not good for this, this method. Thank you for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video for this small series on my process. Bye.